Busby's babes, as they were affectionately called, were on their way home from Belgrade when the disaster struck. They were on top of the world. Their three-goal draw with Yugoslavia's Red Star team had put them through to the European Cup semi-finals. They had high hopes of the English FA Cup. Felt that we had reached the stage when I could nearly have sat in my office for about 10 years and just went out and saw the mice. They had reached that stage of experience, power, skill, and everything else. And uh, there was prizes to be won, many, many prizes to be won, and I felt that probably they would have done wonderful things for a number of years. I would say without any, I have no doubt in my mind, which was the greatest side, and that was the pre-Munich side. Because, uh, Arthur, there's even young boys, 19-year-old and 20. We were winning the English League Championship by 11 points. Staggering. Nine points. Staggering, staggering actually. Yeah. Staggering. And uh, they looked as though uh, they were going to carry everything in front of them for a, number, for a few years, yeah. anyway, in English football now. Matt in Oxen Tent. So I went across there, lifted up the flap of the of this tent effort, and he just, just turned his head and he said, "Oh, it's you, Jimmy." And I, and he said, "Keep the flag flying." You know, didn't converse long. He dozed off then. Next to him was Duncan Edwards. I sat with him a while. And he turned his head, and this is the saddest thing I've ever seen. Oh, been a part of it. In fact, he turned to me, oh, it's you, Jimmy. He said, yes, put my ear down to his mouth. And he said, what time do they kick off tomorrow? Of the 44 who boarded the charter plane home, 23 died in the Munich disaster. Together with officials and journalists, eight players lost their lives. Mark Jones. Roger Byrne, Jeff Bent, Eddie Coleman, David Pegg, Tommy Taylor, Billy Whelan, Duncan Edwards. <laughs>